This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. Keep watching for an exclusive offer for my subscribers from Skillshare. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're going to be addressing one of the biggest complaints I get about DCC++ EX, an engine driver. We're going to be attaching a physical throttle to it. Welcome back everybody. Like I said, today we're going to be making a physical throttle for the engine driver app, which means a physical throttle for DCC++ EX, but not just that. Anything that's using the engine driver app to connect to JMRI or some sort of wide throttle server can use this setup. So if you have your JMRI connected to your Digitrack system or your NCE system or any of the other systems out there, this will work with that so long as you're using the engine driver app. But before we begin, I want to talk about our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There are tons of classes that you can take to improve your model railroading. Like for right now, I'm doing classes on Arduinos to get better at my programming skills, but you can do stuff for painting. You can even do it photography and videography if you wanna learn how to do video like this, or if you wanna learn how to do better photography of your model railroad. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. When you join as a member, you can check out all of the exclusive perks that come with the membership, including things like live classes from some of the platforms that biggest and most popular teachers. And right now, the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link in the description below get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. All right, let's hop into this controller setup. It's really, really neat and it's really, really simple and it involves zero code. Let's get started. Here is the entire setup. You can see it's very minimalist and it looks very simple. It consists of an inexpensive Android smartphone that I've loaded the engine driver app onto and a USB rotary volume knob that's like I said, typically used to control the volume of a device. Here are all the parts you're going to need to make this entire setup. And the most expensive part that you see here is $30. And yes, I am including the phone in that. You do not need an expensive high powered phone to make this work. And you can buy a cheap one that is dedicated to this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in this USB type C splitter into the phone. And what this is basically going to do is going to split our USB plug that is on the phone so that we can have one going to the rotary knob and another one going to a power supply so that we can keep this charged so we can plug it into the wall and not have to worry about recharging it regularly. Next, we're going to take the provided USB cord that comes with the USB volume knob and plug it in to the knob itself. Now, the USB cord that comes with this does have a type A connection to it, and that's just not gonna work. So we're going to need what's called an OTG cable. And basically what this is going to do is allow us to adapt that type A connection to a type C connection. And then we're going to take that type C connection and we're gonna plug it into, in this case, the one that is marked headphones on the USB type C splitter. Now we can see that I can open up engine driver, which I've already installed on my phone here. And I go ahead and select a locomotive and I am able to control the throttle. You can see by turning this. Now, if you need to know how to set up engine driver and run it on your phone. I've done a full review of a lot of different throttles. You can check that out right up here as well as how to use engine driver right up here. Okay, so now it's time for the pop sockets. Now pop sockets are a really cool thing. They've actually been around for quite a few years and they're basically just a really great way to hold your phone and they can also work as a support. But this time we're gonna use it as a mount to hold our phone in place while we're using it as a controller. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the protective film off the adhesive back and place the pop socket in the middle of the back of the phone. Okay. 
and you can see it pops in and out like this but you don't really need to use it this way for this if you want to use this as the stand you are more than welcome to but we're not going to be using it with the pop socket fully extended the next part we're going to be using is this pop tech car dashboard mount for pop sockets and what this basically is going to be is this is going to be the stand that's going to hold up our cell phone with the pop socket on it now once you open it up you get a lot of adhesive mounts and everything the actual mount itself has a suction cup mount and i'm going to be using that since the table i'm going to be mounted on is a metal table but if you had some other surface you could use this suction cup pad right here so that you could place the suction cup mount on it I go ahead and connect the suction cup to the metal base and then I need to put the pop socket mount on which just has a threaded nut that you can go ahead and fit on the ball head that's right here and you just screw it down tight and adjust the mount the way that you want it. Then adjust the mount on the arm so that you have it at the angle that you want and then slide your phone in place. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and bring your rotary knob back in and go ahead and connect everything up to the phone with that USB Type-C splitter. A few quick things that need to be noted so that this works properly. There's not really that much, but you need to go into your preferences, which is at the top of the page on the right, and then scroll down until you get to gamepad type. And you just wanna make sure that you have none selected. If you don't have none selected and you've been trying another one in the past, then this knob is not going to work. Next, let's say you're using one of the multiple throttle layouts and you have two throttles. You can see that there's a tiny little V in the left-hand throttle window where the speed percentage is. That indicates which one is being controlled by the volume controls, which in this case is our USB rotary volume knob. Now all I have to do is just tap the little area where the zero is and it'll switch back and forth. And now you can see that my rotary knob is controlling the right hand throttle. Now let's give this a test. I have my locomotive programmed right here and I go ahead and turn the knob and you can see that the locomotive starts going forward when I turn the knob in the forward direction. and I bring it back down to a stop and then I'm able to put it into reverse by turning the knob in the opposite direction. Now, some of the screen orientations do not have the throttle going in both directions. So if you're using one of these orientations and you want to stop and change direction, you're gonna to have to scroll all the way down to zero, then manually touch which direction you want on the touchpad and turn the knob in the same direction to go in reverse. One really cool thing that I kind of like about the ergonomics of this is it's almost like having one of those miniature secondary throttles that a lot of the other systems have. And obviously you're still gonna want the phone close to you and you can have other phones connected, but this is just a really cool way to control your layout. You don't have to have this sitting somewhere. You can be walking around. The USB cord provided is long enough to do this at a decent distance. And that is the setup for this DIY physical throttle for engine driver. So there you go guys, there is a completely code free setup for a controller that has a physical throttle for DCC++ EX that you can build yourself with very little technical know-how and it works for anything so long as it's using the engine driver app. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I wanna say a big thank you to Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. And I also wanna say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They are listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as one dollar a month a lot of cool stuff going on over there if you're at the five dollar a month level you get a model that you can 3d print every month thank you guys so so much for watching until next time i'm jimmy from the diy digital stay safe be kind and happy railroading hey everybody it's jimmy from the diy and digital and today we are making a 
Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're going to be using a physical. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we are doing something. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're, like I said, we're going to be. Uh, 